And thank you for coming in. Um, you've been pretty um, forward-leaning on social media with regards to what's going on out there. So give us your take. I, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deal with it myself yeah. because I'm, I'm a conservative. I don't want uber government action here. But this is political censorship. Well, it is. And I think that is sort of the crux to one of our uh, our main principles, which is limited government. We don't want government regulating private companies. But I do think that we have reached a point where they essentially are monopolies. When you look at um, right. the percentage of ad buys that these entities have, and now that you have Facebook, who has now purchased Instagram, and um, it's the intent that is so obvious here. Um, yeah, of course, they threw Farrakhan in there just to check a box. You mean the right-wing extremist Farrakhan? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so um, Ilhan Omar is still out there, uh -huh. who is quite the same. Uh, so, so the intent is there. And so the question is, what do you do with a private company who yes. is actively censoring Americans? The argument of, well, you're not paying for the service, so you're not really crossing any boundaries there. But I would argue... Dr. Gorka, that we are paying because they're using our personal information. Right. They're using our data, our information, and they are selling that to make a profit. So if, if our data isn't a currency, then why are they even in business? But at the same time, their argument is, hey, you, you signed. I mean, nobody's ever read them. Sure. Nobody sure. ever. But you signed the terms of service agreement when you create your account. So, hey, it's a private platform. You don't like it. Tough. Well, and it's too late. You know, I would I would agree with that, but I think we have also reached a point um, in this digital platform arena that we should be able to say as an individual, as a consumer, give me back my data. What if we started saying that? Let's just get off all of these platforms, give me all of my information, and then give us the ability to own our own data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if they have it now, and that's the problem, so many people, they cater this social media stuff to 12-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. You have children. And I will tell you a story. My son had a Facebook page. He was, I think, 14 at the time. And they You're would not, not old allow me. You're not enough to have a 14-year-old son, Katrina Pearson. <laughs> well, not thank you. possible. Thank you. I not will possible. Take that. <laughs> but they wouldn't let me take his Facebook page down. What? At, at a minor, 14? A minor. At that time, yes. The re Facebook would not allow me to take my own child's Facebook down because he was of the age to sign up for an account. That is so wrong. So you capture these children, yeah. and you take their information, and then what can you do now that they're 18, 20, you know, in their 30s? What if there's stuff there that a 14-year-old doesn't want out there? Right. So, they, so there is this huge issue we're facing now in the age of digital media. We have to do something about it. Okay, so you are on the Trump campaign. I was an advisor to the president. I was in the Oval last week. Let's pretend we're with the president right now. And he asks us, Katrina, what should I do? What, what is the conservative answer to this question? Do we, do we say, because one argument is, hey, these are publications. They should be treated like a, a publication, which means they're open to all kinds of things, such as libel law. Do we say this is like a newspaper? What's the smart answer, Katrina? Because you're there on social media every day. Right. What should be the, the solution? I think what you said, that these should be treated like media outlets. Um, we now have a vast majority of Americans who are receiving their news from Facebook. Oh, I, I think the majority. I don't know about That's you, right. but as far as I'm concerned, I, don't, I, don't think, I, I can't remember the last time I bought a, bought a newspaper. It's years. I get I get 99%. I don't have cable at home. 90% of my news is talk radio and social media, period. Right. Right? So absolutely. Right. And so they absolutely are media, even though they may not call themselves that, but they're making money as that type of source. Right. So I right. do think, you know, I don't influence policy. I'm just, um, you know, a mom, a concerned parent, a concerned citizen, a concerned woman, when I see other women voicing their opinions that the left doesn't agree with, they're being silenced, and, and that's a concern for me. So I would just tell the president, let's look at it. Let's see if they are acting like a media outlet and, and, and go from there. And the, the other thing you mentioned I think is super important, monopoly and cartel. Right? Right. We, we have laws against monopolies right. and cartels. If, if you just bought Instagram and, and you are the, I mean, there's only, there's only two platforms, really. Right. It's, it's Facebook and Twitter then that's a monopoly and maybe we need to investigate that. The Silicon okay. Valley Mafia.
Indeed. Well, what does Breitbart call them? The masters of the universe. <laughs> uh, let, let me play you an audio cut. Uh, I need to get uh, your take on a certain person. What's her name? Oh, Ocasio-Cortez. Um, oh. <laughs> we, we have some audio, which is quite stunning. She loves recording video of herself. Um, and I'm going to ask you a question about whether or not we take this person seriously. Let's play cut two. Oh, my God, you guys. I just checked on my community garden slot, and I was so nervous because I was, I was in New York for two weeks in recess. Look. Oh, my God. Look at this. <gasps> It's like, look at the collard greens. They're huge. Look at the dahlias. Oh, my God. I don't have to trim all of these back for smoothies. <gasps> I am shook. <gasps> look, like, honestly, gardening, food, that comes out of dirt. Like, it's magic. It's magic. She's not woke. She's shook. She didn't realize that vegetables... Come out of the, <laughs> the ground! <dirt. laughs> this is not a joke. That's not a, that's not a little eight-year-old impersonator. That is AOC saying, "Oh my gosh, it's magic!" Okay, I have to ask you this. In a minute and a half, we have left. Do we take Ocasio Cortez seriously, Katrina Person? Look, I had not heard that <laughs> audio yet, um, but I will say that I won't take anyone seriously that tells people the world's going to end in twelve years. Um, such that's a where she lost me. Uh, you know, I, I'm actually okay if she wants to get excited about her garden, but don't put it on video. I mean, she is but an elected magic. official now. It's magic. It is magic. And she's shook by the Not food woke. coming out Not of woke. the dirt. She's well, shook. You know what? That's because liberals are used to food just showing up in the grocery store. Right. The, they the, don't the, realize the, what's behind the it. The Brooklyn Bolshevik <laughs> thinks that vegetables come in little cellophane wrappers at Safeway. Exactly. Right? Oh Having far too much fun. Okay, let's get back to social media because we have to make sure as long as we're on there and allowed to be there that people are following. Show this lady some love. Okay, we did. The, who did we do this for? We did this for Sarah Carter. We bumped her. We bumped the president last week. We need to get this lady over half a million by oh, close yes. of business today. She's at 463.9 thousand. Come on, guys. <laughs> Show some love now. Katrina Pearson. Katrina Pearson, P-I-E-R-S-O-N. She is Senior Advisor, Team Trump 2020. I'm Sebastian Gorka, former strategist to the president.